My name's Ella Alshamahi. I'm a paleoanthropologist. I specialise in Neanderthals and in fossil hunting in unstable, hostile and disputed territories. I'm also a stand-up comic. I think people think I specialise in unstable places because I watch too much Indiana Jones <laughs> or something. I'm not somebody who is all in for the adventure of it, um, for the adrenaline of it. I don't even like fairground rides. As I started off uh, studying paleoanthropology, I was just more and more convinced that Yemen was important for the migration of, of, uh, of humans out of Africa. When I was in uh, lectures as an undergrad, uh, I had human evolution explained to me. Um, they kept saying that uh, humans left via the Sinai of Egypt. And because I just happened to come from that part of the world and I, and I know the geography there, I just kept looking at that map going, I think you guys might be missing something. There's this strait called Bab el Mandeb, which separates um, East Africa from Yemen. And it's, um, when you see it on the map, it's actually it's pretty narrow. And I found out that actually there's quite a few academics that thought exactly the same thing as me. And so I kind of, moved out to Yemen um, to, to do my work there. And I realised as I was doing it, actually, I, I don't need to go to the stable places anymore. I should just stay where I am. And you know, I'm not an idiot. I don't walk into active war zones. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I, I, you know, I quite like being alive. <laughs> it's, it's something I'm very, uh, very fond of. I'm gonna try to stick to that for as long as possible. So, you know, right now, because Yemen is an active, active war zone, I'm not there. Both my parents are actually Yemeni, um, and so the connection to Yemen is, is pretty strong. Um, and since the war started, um, quite a lot of the family have become refugees. Um, and the ones that are left there are uh, not, not really having a, a very easy time of it. I got a message from, well, I sent a message to one of my cousins asking how she was. She's younger than me and she's become the main breadwinner for her whole family. Um, and she said, uh, I, I mourn the loss of my youth. And it was just one of those things where I was just like, <laughs> you know. Um, and I think there's a lot of stories like that. And, and um, it's, it's, it's a really, you know, war is a really tragic thing. And it's, I think the strange thing is I'm, I'm so used to conflict, but when it happened to a place that I'm so connected to, it was something completely different. You know, I'm, I'm used to things that can sometimes be quite um, sad and unpleasant, and I'm, I'm used to dealing with them. I have a very, very specific coping mechanism, which is to compartmentalize. Um, so, for example, we'll be on a, we'll be somewhere, and somebody will say, oh, um, everybody from our village is just, all the women and children from our village have just been evacuated. Or somebody will turn up and they'll be talking about landmines, or, you know, There'll be some tragic story about somebody who's, uh, you know, just been hurt in, in a war um, that they were just kind of fighting in very recently. And the way I cope with it is to compartmentalise it. So I make sure I don't get overly emotional. I just compartmentalise it. I'm like, look, I've got a job to do. You're just going to get on with it. That's, that's your contribution to the plight of this area. And um, I think people sometimes thought I was really cold <laughs> because that was my coping mechanism. I was like, this is how I deal with it. And then it happened to where my family come from. And it was, <laughs> it was a completely different story. It was, you know, it was, yeah, I was suddenly just a wreck and I was like, oh, right, okay. <laughs> okay, you can only do that for so long, yeah. What I've, what I've found generally uh, is that comedy is actually a really, really good release for some of the, um, it's a coping mechanism, I think, for some of the, darker stuff that I have to deal with. I think you really do have um, a choice in how you, you view the world and how you view yourself and, and um, your attitude to the world. And you can choose to view it with a certain amount of humour and, um, and I think that's something that I don't know if it, I don't know how naturally it comes to me, but I've, um, I've certainly realised that it's my way of coping and it really, it really makes me happy. I think there is a very, very good likelihood that at some point people will find human fossils in Yemen. There are no rules other than just keep looking. <laughs> so that's just how paleoanthropology works. You keep looking, you keep looking, you keep looking, and most of the time you never find anything. But 
if you if you put in enough hours sometimes you're lucky sometimes the problem is if nobody's looking <laughs> if none of us are looking uh nobody's gonna find them i i i can't express to you enough how i can't wait to go back to the mainland <laughs>